Okay, I guess I'll start. For the secretary, when you got in office, you even said at the beginning of this that you thought this would go faster than it has. What was the most unexpected aspect getting into the E15 discussion that has halted talks? What I was referring to was federal regulations generally. I, uh, as governor, you're used to making decisions and getting things done. Uh, the federal government is a little more complicated than that, complex than that, regarding all the checkoffs back and forth and uh, statutory timelines. And uh, uh, we have to have office of management and budget to review everything. We do an interagency type thing. All those checks and balances are good, but they take way too much time. So it's very difficult to get things done quickly. And some of the things are fairly common sense. It frustrates me when we're not able to move more quickly on that. I'll give you an example of one of the frustrating things here that our representative Noam brought to my attention with the silly uh, rodeo issue out here. And we're trying to get uh, uh, the girls and boys rodeo issue uh, resolved. And uh, that takes more time than I, uh, I would like. But it's just common sense for people who uh, who know about those kind of things, but we create rules and regulations and laws sometimes that have unintended consequences. That's the frustrating part I was talking about. Okay. Some of the ag economists are talking <clears throat> about the difference in E15 could be 2%, 3%. Is that a beginning? Is there more out there in, in terms of the corn market? More out there? Uh, in terms of growth? More I, than I a 2% change? I think it depends change. on how quickly we can uh, build out the E15 network. Uh, uh, Jeff was talking this morning from Poet that uh, it took a while on the E10, but I think that having that uh, history of E10, people understand that this is a clean burning, uh, green, American built uh, fuel and leads to our energy independence. If you recall back uh, 12 or 15 years ago when this industry was kind of really getting going, uh, there was a different energy balance worldwide. We were fighting wars over uh, in the Middle East about uh, energy issues and we were sent, remember campaigns sending billions of dollars to the Middle East here. Uh, ethanol has helped to change that along with other technology and, uh, and petroleum production. So I'm an all of the above kind of a guy and we want to do go to E15 as a beginning. Uh, we think it will build corn demand. It's good for agriculture, good for our producers. Our livestock guys today said it also provides a great feed source for them as well with the byproducts of that. So use American grown energy in a, wear, in a clean way. This plant here is also particularly creative in its uh, recycling of uh, uh, landfill gases, methanol uh, coming off the landfill using a recycling here as well as for, uh, fueling with biomass and wood chips. So those are the kind of technologies that we can use all American and all uh, energy uh, dominance. <coughs> Secretary, a little bit different topic. Uh, your state was devastated by the hurricane. Yes. Um, you know, the trade payments are based upon production. When you've lost all your production in a hurricane like that, do you see any changes that you guys might make in the uh, trade aid program based upon production losses? Or, uh, and do you expect to see when you might announce that second round of payments possibly? Two good questions, obviously. Uh, uh, we contemplated normal circumstances. Uh, the farm programs and the farm bill that uh, our senators and Congress have uh, passed have good safety net provisions in normal circumstances. You'll have a drought here and there, but don't contemplate the kind of total devastation you see in the natural disasters we've had with hurricanes. Uh, I do, and I've asked our staff to look at the fact that while we did believe that uh, in the mitigation payment should be based on actual production, not uh, not county averages and those kind of things was the intention. I think we've got to look at some considerations where people had crops that were good crops and uh, and were totally obliterated. We've got, uh, you don't have much cotton here in South Dakota, but the cotton guys down there, they were looking at a bumper crop and some of the people that I know personally said they had picked half their field and then six hours later after the hurricane, you couldn't tell where they picked and where they had So these, these safety net programs don't contemplate that. And I think if Congress is uh, generous enough to give us another supplemental regarding a, a disaster program for Hurricane uh, Florence and uh, Michael, then we need to look at those kind of considerations. The uh, second tranche of payments, we, uh, I'd like to get them out sooner rather than later. I actually had hoped to do it in October, and this is where OMB came back in and uh, asked us to hold back. Part of the reason for that is 
Uh, there's not a good farmer in America, not a farmer in America, that would rather not have a good crop at a fair price than a government check. And so the second tranche is there to continue to incentivize our negotiators to get trade done and resolved. And, and the good news is we're move, making progress in that. We got the South Korea deal, we got uh, the Canadian and the Mexican deal done, now we're moving to EU and Japan and on to where China realizes they're going to be isolated in the fair and free trade area of this world and hopefully they'll come along and stop stealing our stuff and play fair. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, there's a plan in the hands of your chief economist as well as your deputy secretary for over a month that's called the REPTI plan that supports farm income immediately by raising loan levels 155% and makes the corn loan 303, the soybean loan 775 immediately, but it's a volunteer no cost program because it's a recourse loan with a 1% higher interest rate. And to address the ethanol industry, Jeff's concerned as well as corn growers concerns, it immediately takes all nationwide pumps from 10% to 11%. And that consumes another 500 million bushel of this year's corn crop. And the courts or the, the lawyers aren't going to be able to stop that. Can you present that to the farmers at your next stop as well as send it out through your farm service agencies to the Minnesota uh, uh, farmers, to the South Dakota and North Dakota farmers? Because you said you like farmer input, they will immediately tell you, we want the option to use the REPKE plan to support farm income and put a lot more ethanol on the market immediately than compared to E15. Sir, as you know, you just gave me that uh, document as I walked I in. Did. I'm, I'm happy to look at it. I haven't had a chance to look at it. We went right into the meeting and it sounds uh, innovative and creative and we'll look at all kinds of ideas. I'm looking for anything that can make farming by sustainable. And the best opportunity to make farming sustainable is to make it profitable again. So we'll look at that. I appreciate that, sir. One more question. <coughs> yep. uh, Jeremy Lidham in South Dakota Public Broadcasting. I want to ask you about the comment that was made earlier about making sure that the pumps across the country and as well as in communities like here in Chancellor make sure they have the E15. What's your response to that? What can you do on your end to ensure that occurs? And again, the market will drive much of this, if we're able to get the delta in price that I think we can get with E15, that'll help. Consumers will make that choice. Uh, retailers and, uh, and businesses uh, do what consumers like, and if they, if they uh, ask for E15, they're going to make an effort to do that. I mentioned the fact that I know in the past USDA has been a partner in some of that infrastructure build out, and there may be some ways that we can participate again that without, without commitment. That's the kind of thing we're looking at. I like to I like to think out loud and talk out loud with people uh, in these kind of meetings where we can get better ideas. But those are the kind of things we'll be willing to consider, you know, going forward. And you think that's something you get bipartisan support on? Do you think you can get past all that? I don't, think, I don't that? think so. Absolutely. And we've had programs like that at the state level. When I was in the state legislature, we partnered as well with federal dollars and local business and uh, ethanol industry dollars to make sure that that infrastructure was available. If we have pumps, Consumers will choose the ethanol product because they know it's a product they can trust that gives them better efficiencies and is renewable right here at home. I think what was important about the discussion that we had today was recognizing that this um, executive order is moving forward, that the EPA is dedicated to following through on the president's time frame, and that we're smart enough to do it in a way that it's legally defensible. That's really the keys that we need to see to have this be successful so that we can put those two billion bushels of corn into crush for ethanol that drives up our market prices and make sure that we have this not just focusing on on uh, world markets but also markets right here at home where we can use our products today. Yeah, and I think the, the timing on this is critical and if you notice when the small refineries were in trouble the EPA acted very rapidly to take mm -hmm. care of their need. My yeah. question is can they act just yeah. as rapidly to take care of the needs of small producers. Yeah. And that's what this is all about. Let's see the same kind of interest in getting this done in a timely fashion. Yeah. That's great. Good. Thank you all. Thank you all. Yeah. It was an honor to meet you folks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.